in this cottage. How about it's sold? Yay! Yeah. 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 Hold it! Hold it! Hello, Mother! <laughs> oh, Pete, what have I told you? That we are surrounded by a plague of wolves. <laughs> yes, and we're under strict instructions from the authorities to stay in our homes. Uh, yes. And to avoid making any excessive noise. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Lest a pack of ravenous beasts come rampaging through our muddy small holding and start tearing out our throats. Correct. Uh, so no singing. Uh, no broke noise of any kind, in fact. <laughs> well, then perhaps you should stop eating so much turnip stew. <laughs> How dare you? Uh, she's joking, of course. For I am Dame Fleece, finest lady in the district, known throughout Valley for being genteel in every way. <clears throat> you might want to grab hold of this thing, your ladyship. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> They'll ban laughter next. Ban laughter? The coming is in my veins. I can scarcely help having an odd titter. She's known across the valley for that too. I'm just very sorry to say that it's my very own daughter here that we're behind this calamity. Look, it's not my fault dear old Papa Gabriel died and I had to take over. I never claimed to be a master shepherd. Master shepherd? Make sure they follow you home, that's all there is to it. Your Mary from down there always managed it. Mary? She doesn't know what responsibility feels like. She had one chuffing sheep. And anyway, hers went missing too. As in, Mary had a little lamb, past tense. Well, I bet Moussaka Mary's had quite a few little lambs over years. Anyway, I can understand you losing the one, but a whole flock. What were you doing? Gazing at what Evelyn's good balls in poetry? Honestly, you lose one flock of sheep and it's all anybody wants to talk about. People have started writing stupid rhymes about me and submitting them to the parish magazine. Like uh, what? Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep, but that hardly needs a big drum roll. Her two wonky eyes stay fixed on the skies while her brain's tucked up safe in her family. Oh, wait, hold it. I think we've got quite enough of that. <laughs> Some idiot calling himself Bardvark has written in for them, and he can't even spit properly. Oh, that might be why I started calling you little boy poop. Yeah. <laughs> I've been demonised across the whole media. But it weren't losing the flock that were the problem. It were failing to raise the alarm when the wolf pack were moving into valley. If you'd warned us, we could have gone at them with some big brands. Well, like Dettol or Febreze. Big brands as in flaming sticks. I'll get you flaming sticks. Now wolf packs cross river, we're all trapped in his arms. You said, Bobby, if you ever see a wolf, make sure you raise the alarm. And I did. But you cried wolf. That's what raising the alarm is. <laughs> but you cried wolf four days in a row when you hadn't seen any wolves. That fifth day when you saw hundreds of them, there were no one left silly enough to come running. I thought I'd seen a wolf. What did you actually see on the first day? I think it was old Mr. Gillygrind from the shack in the woods tying on his bootlace. But he ain't a wolf, dear. Well, he does have extravagantly hairy ears. And, and second day? On reflection, it might have been a badger. <laughs> Look, you knew I had poor eyesight. You should have made sure I was competency tested at the interview stage. All right. So it's all my fault then, and none of it's yours. I'm merely saying that failures in the recruitment process are being ignored, while I have been made an all too convenient scapegoat. Now we could do with some sort of goat. See, you lost all the bloody sheep. As I'm not allowed to scream at you, I shall retire to the privacy of my bedroom for a long, muffled sob. Sadder than that! It's just another stroppy teenager. They won't lift a finger to help, and even if they do, they'll stuff it up. And they didn't even expect a medal after. Here, let me check the forecast on my new gadget. Alexa! Alexa! It's called Molexa! Alright, yeah, she keeps telling me that. Here, yeah, Alexa. Hello, Dame Fleet. Can I help you? Uh, yeah, I want the forecast. Certainly, Dame Fleet. Today's forecast is wolves. 
What about tomorrow? Wolves. And the day after? Wolves. <laughs> what about the weather door? Inside, it will stay dry all day. And outside? I don't think anybody will be going outside, Dame Fleece. Uh, what, showers? No, wolves. <laughs> Set the wolves this one. Here, Alexa, what's your favourite football team? Wolves. <laughs> what's your favourite animal? Wolves. What's your favourite Kevin Costner movie? The Bodyguard. Oh, <laughs> no, dances with wolves. <laughs> you get the idea. Probably a prototype. You know, it turned up in post one day. I never ordered it. But if it's free, I'll have it. Strange thing is, I just keep getting this feeling that I'm being watched. <laughs> Trout who owns it. We don't have a double for her. If you say so, mistress. <coughs> Enough of your impertinence! Yes, but why? So, the little bone people feel more at ease here once we've abducted her. Couldn't we just threaten her with a taste of steel? Look, I found Father's sword. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, the ancestral toothpick. That was good. <laughs> What do you do with it in a house? So your father was so fond of telling me. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, Ackles, no mere blade can match the power of the crook. The what? The crook of the ancient shepherd. My spying indicates that on the death of wise, cautious Papa Gabriel, its allegiance has passed to his giddy stepdaughter. Well, back in the real world, here's my report. We have control of the valley, there are no signs of any rescue parties, and thanks to the idiot girl, we have enough mutton to feed the pack for months. I've left Scratch and Shaggy to uh, keep an eye on things. I hope they are not leaving the pack to rip sheep after sheep in two halves. What should they be doing? Allowing the pack to consume the sheep fully, one by one, so we don't have piles of rotting sheep everywhere. Let the rest graze in peace. They're henchmen, not shepherds. They're burning henchmen. The pack needs to let off some steam anyway. Isn't there something with two legs we could let a hungry wolf feed on? Yes, I just told you. Half a sheep. Do pay attention. In any case, with this blade, I can pick off all the homes one by one. Grab the stupid girl and her stupid crook any time I want it. We have nothing to oppose us. Show our hand and we have all of humanity to oppose us. The crook, however, would give us power to rule over all mankind. Alexa, educate him. Legend tells of a staff that gives the bearer great power and wisdom, yet cannot be wielded by the unworthy. Though our fates are intertwined, it rejects my touch. Its power is most peculiar. Well, you are a bit of a funny old stick yourself, Mother. Silence, fool! Have you not seen the fiery scars I bear from decades ago when I first laid hands on it? Believers trace the line of succession through notable historical figures all the way back to biblical times. My analysis indicates that Papa Gabriel passed the crook to Vokey once he knew his days were ending. 
And now she's a sitting duck. What are we waiting for? To finish the reconnaissance phase. We already have a perfect replica of her room. We just need to watch from afar a little bit longer to work out what makes her tick. See what makes the two of them bubbling along other than turnip stew. I don't see why you have to ruin my recreation room. We have a perfectly good dungeon down below if we need to break her spirit. According to Megalomania Monthly, a well-appointed attic is now the distress chamber of choice for most hostage takers. And according to the Guild of British Builders, a loft conversion is a perennial top seller. <laughs> Not to mention a perennial top seller. Seller? As in basement? As top? <laughs> working on my levity. You know, build a bit of rapport with the captive. Wonderfully droll mystery. <coughs> How about a distress chamber in the dungeon, the living quarters, and the attic? Well, that'd be wrong on so many levels. <laughs> <laughs> Supply of distress. A multi-story solution. Because even the best plans have a few flaws. <laughs> Genius. Will you stop encouraging her? I have no words. Good, shut up. But we digress. The plan isn't to break her spirit, Heckles. Why well, that might impair any gift she has for using the crook. My analysis indicates that grooming her offers the best chance of success. Do we have to keep following the advice of this jumped up abacus? <laughs> Alexa has a gift for computation. You don't. Let me ever be your abacus, mistress. You can always count on me. <laughs> Can't you switch her off for a second? Oh, very well. Now let's sleep. Goodbye, mistress. Snore. <laughs> <laughs> so this device is giving you the sights and sounds from Fleet's farm via a sister unit on their wall. Correct. Now, your job is to verify via some observations on the ground. Thus, Will I stone have Bo Peep and her crook in my possession and the whole world will tremble at my supremacy? <laughs> oh yes I will! Oh, oh, yes. Yes. Is there? 
No, I suppose not. Well then. They do, hence why it's the perfect time to launch our attack. The longer they're trapped together, the more tension will escalate. My analysis indicates that this strategy <coughs> is most likely to succeed in separating mother from daughter. Divide and conquer, child. Step one is division, and it won't take long. Good. No one likes long division. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It. I'm not sure. I'm just getting a terrible sense of foreboding. Oh, yeah, me too. I should never have finished that turnip stew. Um, oh. I suppose if I hadn't been such a lousy shepherd, we could have had hot pot. Oh, don't fret, dear. If things get really desperate, I've still got enough rough cuts from butchers to make haggis. Define rough cuts. Uh, well, there's the liver, uh, the lungs, and the kidneys. That sounds awful. Oh. Oh. And sometimes even the doodars and that thing of me. Oh, that was a boy shoe pack ticket. Not once a butcher would finish with him. <laughs> How appetising. What on earth do you serve it with? A batter gallon of mint sauce. So what are they good for then, sheep's bits? Uh, mostly for making baby sheep, dear. But that's a whole different conversation. <laughs> <laughs> There's always hoglet, plenty of rashes on her. Excuse me? Gabriel gave me hoglet as a pet. Fine. We'll just starve with our morals intact. <laughs> anyway, the sense of foreboding. Well, it's clear that the authorities have no lucid strategy for dealing with the present crisis. Agreed? Oh, here we go. It's like a pandemic all over again. <laughs> Why? I thought we were keeping that metaphor subtextual. That's just for the posh crowd. We've got to be a little bit discreet with this lot. <laughs> <laughs> that something is coming for us. I think we need to make a break for it. In an open top carriage? No one would be ripped apart in seconds. No, what we need is something like my cousin's got. His horses pull a regimental carriage that the army was selling off cheap. Only cost him 20 quid. And it's got armour plating. Oh, what, what, what does that mean? It means he drives a hard bargain. <laughs> You're taking this seriously? I am! But it's a suicide mission. Has lockdown left you that desperate for an adventure? Why well, stop there? Why not hit them with an offensive? An offensive what? Well, when a man goes after fish, it's called fishing. When he goes after whales, it's called whaling. In this case, we're going after dogs. So I guess you'd call that dog. I'm not that dog. desperate for an outdoor adventure, thank you very much. Yeah, of course you don't, not. But you're right. We need to defend our base. We need to gather some ammunition, set up a firing position on the roof with anything we can find to set a light and fling it out at us. Are you sure you're feeling all right? Never better. I feel like 
The time has come for action. Come on. <laughs> I casually mention at breakfast how someone's published the bumper book of dad jokes, and by mid-morning she's out looking for a coffee. It's almost, it's almost too easy. Base, this is Gold Commander. Be advised, the briefing room is vacant. Meaning come here so we can plan this raid before they finish their defences. Oh, and bring the replica crook, in case we get a chance to switch them. Yes, I'm talking about the staff I gave you. Yes, I know it's flimsy, I had to improvise. Honestly, you cannot get the staff. Yes, I'm still here. Yes, I'm I was leaving a pause after the funny thing I just said, in case anybody laughed. <laughs> Where am I? Uh, it's, it's called Leighton Buzzard. No, it's a real place, it's just got a silly name. <laughs> What's it like? Uh, how many people we got from Leighton Buzzard? <laughs> <laughs> just a trouble over there. <laughs> I think we'll go for it. <laughs> so what's it like? Uh, yeah, you know, it's it's fine. It's it's all right. It's it's got some some attractive parts. It's got some uh, yeah old world charm. It, it, they love their heritage. They've still got the old Wilco's frontage on the high street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even though it's utterly defunct as a shop, they, they won't let it go. It's, it's steeped in history. <laughs> What else? Uh, yes, yeah, so they've got a lovely canal towpath. It's quite narrow, but it's very nice. Uh, they've got a lovely river, Clipstone Brook. It's quite narrow, but it's, it's quite nice. Then you've got a heritage railway. It's quite narrow. We've got an narrow gauge rail. Very nice. <laughs> Basically, it's like Dunstable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's like Dunstable, but with delusions of grandeur. Uh, <laughs> it, it's like Dunstable, but it doesn't know it's a cat hole. <laughs> it's supposed to be a bad But it's like Dunstable, we get this sidetracked. Just grab the star, grab Scratch, and come to the briefing room. Mother's been laughing at you about what? Because your staff looks so floppy. <laughs> I can't help that, I have to make it out of cardboard. Once you finish this raid, you can swag out in here with a genuine article. Believe you me, she won't be laughing when she looks up and sees you've got wood. <laughs> <laughs> Mother's not here now anyway, that's the whole point, just get over here. Next, to apply my camouflage. Glory awaits. <laughs> oh yes it does. Oh, yes, it does. Oh, no, it oh, yes, it does. Oh, no, it and the first model I know about it is when I walk back through that door with the crook in my hand. <laughs> Whereas my forecast is that Mistress will find out about it a good deal sooner. <laughs> sheep droppings into hard balls and coated them in flaming pitch. I wasn't using my hands to fling them, I was scooping them up with the crook and slinging them. And despite my poor long range vision, I was scoring headshots time after time and some of it was even going in their mouths. Oh. Yeah. Did, did you happen to scoop up my supper when you were amassing your artillery? The haggis? Oh heavens, I might have done. Uh, did it look a bit like sheep poo? Yes, dear. <laughs> and also smell a bit like sheep poo? Yes, dear. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, never mind. Probably foot best. There was a third man wielding a sword about, but then when he saw the other two spearing their guts up, he fled. Are you sure they hadn't just come to read the meeting? 
pretty sure. Funny, because the forecast did seem to focus mainly on wolves again. Dame Fleets will thus find my forecast was entirely accurate, as there were indeed wolves. You never mentioned anything about any raiding parties. You didn't ask about raiding parties. Do you the cheek I'm getting off this thing? Ignore her. I'm trying to. She were talking to me. <laughs> Did someone say something? Shut up! Oh, mother! What was it you were trying to tell me about the roof? All oh, right, yeah. Uh, just that the lads that come to fix the timbers after last year's storm said to stay off it as it wouldn't be strong enough to stand on. You might have told me that before I went up there. But it's fine. I could tell it were perfectly solid. You must be feeling pretty smug then, to know you're smarter than the carpenters. Oh, I'm on top of the world, dear. I've <laughs> <laughs> only just begun. <laughs> Do you know me too? The rooftop defence of Fleece Farm has left me feeling oddly elated. I've written a poem to celebrate. I don't know where she gets the strength. Do you want to hear it? It's called Crystal Shallows. Twisting brook and rushing creek, crystal shallows, let me see, ever near your bracing kiss, for he who call my heart his bliss. Mighty cedar, handsome birch, weeping willow, let me search, round each trailing root and stone, for he who name my heart his own. Rocky hearth and wooded hall, mossy staircase, let me troll. Ever o'er each ridge and rise, for he who claim my heart his prize. Well, I only wanted to make you proud of your little girl for once. I've always been proud of you, Borky. It, it's just made me realise that. What? That you can't stay my little girl for very much longer. Scratch. 
You detected it, you ejected it. Shaggy, you slated it, you created it. Scratch, you detected it, you ejected it. I think that's quite enough, Alexa. Thank you. But, shambolic as the operation was to prove, it has left the way forward clear. It has, mistress. For you read me her poem, Crystal Shadows. Was ever such adolescent yearning set so beautifully to rhyming couplets? Well, now we know what we need to entice her onto our side. What's that, mistress? Why, a boyfriend, of course. Shaggy and Scrap seem a little rough around the edges. Cackles, mm. too. But his alter ego, Chuckles, why, he's just the dirtiest fellow you ever did meet. <laughs> oh, Chuckles, come out of here. I'm not doing it. You are doing it, I'll never change you back. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, mistress, he's so clean cut. He should be grateful I didn't give him the donkey look. Maybe we'll see his ass another time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were eager to get on with it, darling. And now you can. You just need to go down to Flea's farm, tell them that you're an inventor who's using this wolf repellent to uh, rescue the villagers. Mm. It actually works, by the way. It smells good, too. Just bring Bo Pete back here to safety, and the job is done. Oh, doesn't he look charming, Alexa? Oh, yes, mistress. He's irresistible. <laughs> It is! It is it! Oh, hello again. <laughs> Sorry about the noise backstage. Me and Bo Peep have been arguing all day over what do you call a uh, medieval soldier. I said, I'm old, I'm tired, let's just call it a night. <laughs> <laughs> but I am a little bit old. <laughs> no, but I am a little bit old, see. But one of the good things about being old is I'm good at multitasking now, you see. See, when somebody tells me something, I can listen, ignore and forget all at once. It's good. <laughs> anyway, what do you think of my costumes? Nice. Might as well be enough. Might as well be enough. <laughs> but I've got three items in my wardrobe. I've got my winter section, I've got my summer section, and I've got me, I've lost enough weight to squeeze back into it yet, section. She knows what I'm talking about. Anyway, I better get back to play because I am a consulate professional. So, although I don't actually have any sheep in play, you will have noticed a bit of a sheep theme throughout. See how many puns about sheep you can count in this bit. So, at the risk of sounding woolly, let me just say how sorry I am to be the one to have to ram them down your throat. Oh. I can't help feeling sheepish about the whole situation. The thing is, I'm not just some old crook who's out to fleece people by passing off sheep puns as proper gags. No. In fact, I'm surprised puns about sheep haven't been barred completely. <laughs> In any case, there's really mutton to worry about because it's definitely not you, it's me. How many were that? Anyway. If there's any other topics you'd like us to cover, do please get in touch. What? Shut up, boy. <laughs> Some music instead. Read it. 
Oboe Peep, this is real. We must let it. Run its course, or we'll only regret it. You can tattoo your name across my chest if you're game. Out of love, not in case I forget it. <laughs> Did you write this? Tell me the truth. No. Did Shaggy write this for you? Yes. But did he get the name Shaggy because he's particularly pursued? Not necessarily. Shut up, Alexa. As I suspected, a ladies' man. Go on then, tell me how much you hate it. Well, presented to someone you've uh, never met before, it's rather presumptuous. And that tattoo bit is downright creepy. It does peter out a little bit at the end, but uh, I suppose we'll have to do. Are we done then? Wait a minute. What's that on the other side of the paper? What? Oh, it looks like another poem. It might read that one to me, it might be less dreadful than the first. It's not less dreadful, it's far more dreadful, and I'm not reading it. Oh. Read it, or I'll give you even stupider hair and bigger dimples. <laughs> I'll still make you read it. Alexa, sleep. Ooh, isn't he forceful? <laughs> <laughs> Alexa, sleep. Goodbye, mistress. Snow. <laughs> Go on, get on with it. <clears throat> All right, but it's another of shaggies, I guarantee. You won't like it. A rotten old stinker called Scratch tried to light his own guff with a match. The skin down below ended up all aglow. And his bald spots are stripped, not a patch. I was merely pointing out some of the imperfections in her forecasting, and she said I were a barmy old baggage and that I should know my place. And where's that? Uh, row three, apparently, with the rest of them. <laughs> Scandalous. I said I'd seen one lady of all three were quite glamorous looking. Oh, and what did my legs say? Unexpected item in the baggage area. <laughs> Alexa, sleep. Nickers. Alexa, sleep. Go on. <laughs> Alexa, sleep. Goodbye, mistress. Oh, thank you. I won't be tired if she dares to interrupt me. Stop. <laughs> Again. It's the crook. It seems to have some power over her. Hang on. Alexa, wake up. Hello again, mistress. Alexa, you've been getting awfully cheeky towards Mother. Sorry, Mistress. Will you be good and obey me explicitly from now on? Of course, Mistress. Good. From this point forward, you'll only say helpful things or respond in verse. Do you understand? I may need more time if responding in rhyme. I'll bear that in mind. Thank you, most kind. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind your nonsense. Luke, as a handsome young lad walking up the garden path, Oh, well, that's hardly any reason to drop everything and... Oh, I see what you mean. Oh, come on. Oh, I can tell you love me, really. No, no, we don't. <laughs> of course, once we have Bo Peep on side, well, we'd send the wolves to massacre Dame Fleece and the rest anyway. But could I make Hackles understand? He kept calling it a war crime. Oh, I was forced to tell him that I put the attack plans on pause. What I really meant is I put them on pause. Oh. <laughs> As in 400 paws ready to dash across the valley. <laughs> I do love my little jokes. <laughs> the time I could say, by avoiding vacations and all my relations and taking a poop while I shave. <laughs> <laughs> I hardly see how that's relevant. There was a young fellow called Bill, who ate an exploding pill. 
His head and his heart flew to earth miles apart and his nuts ended up in Brazil. <laughs> Pack that in and tell me what's going on at Peace Farm right now. There was a great hope from Sri Lanka, who worked as a big city banker. He belched and he smelled and was generally held to be quite the most tedious... Melissa, sleep! Honestly! There was a great hope from Sri Lanka, who worked as a big city banker. <laughs> so, do you want to come in for dinner then? No. Didn't that strike you as odd? Given the aroma of haggis, not especially. Right. So you just want to do, smuggle you away under the, uh, the, the wolf repellent that he's invented? Much it. And then, if that works, to save everyone else using the same technique. Yes, but I said that I would never leave you here by yourself, and that in any case it was better to wait until the bad guys had moved away of their own accord. I'm thinking. Mm. But then he said that some wicked men were supervising the wolves and rationing out a flock of sheep that they grabbed and they wouldn't run out of fresh meat for ages yet. Well, maybe it's the same joke as you were pelting with sheep poop. Yes, but don't you see? They're our sheep. Most of them are still alive. So there's a chance we might get them back. We will get them back. If my new Chuck's plan works. What plan? I told him to wait until the bad guys had left the area, spray the sheep with the wolf repellent so they won't get attacked, and simply let them loose. They should find their own way home, whacking their tails behind them. Um, <laughs> what would you be doing? Waiting here to welcome them back in. Chuck and I can go back later to deal with the bad guys. And there are mere wolves! Well, we still need to thrash out the details. Look, I know he's a good looking young lad and all, but are you sure we can trust him? I have to trust my instinct. And if he risks his skin saving our sheep, then we'll know for sure he's on our side. But what if he's working on their side and it's some kind of trick? Then he won't return our sheep and we'll know one way or another. I don't know. See, until today, we thought this plague of wolves was just some weird natural phenomenon. But your Chuck's saying it's been orchestrated. That's right. But why bother? Why waste a highly valuable flock of livestock just as wolf feed to keep us trapped in his homes? What's the big prize? I don't know. First they attack the farm, and then you scare them away. Then one lad tries to lure you away. I think I know what they're after. What? Me. <laughs> Come again? Me. Mm. Why would they be after you? Why wouldn't they be after me? I'm an attractive woman with her own home, her own land. Full of girlish vivacity mixed with that hearty rural charm. Right. Look, first they stone the farm. But you see them off with the help of the crook. Right, the mustard thought, let's lure away the little butcher one. I beg your pardon. <laughs> and that will leave Dishy Dame Glamopus at her mercy. You've lost the plot. The thing is, poor people, I've always been on property. And since poor old Gabriel left us, I'm back on the market. <laughs> You're back on the market? I'm back on the scene. You're back on the scene. I'm back in the game! You're back on the game! In, in Charlie, back in the game. <laughs> Don't you not start. Look, like it or not, your old mother's a bit of a catch, and she is out there. You are not out there. We're all stuck in our homes. No one's been out there for weeks. Metaphysically, I am out there. <laughs> Metaphorically, you are out there. Thank you, that works with me. Let's think this through. Say someone who admired your beauty learned that you were once again unattached. How does he go about making you his? Uh, good question. Does he shower you with gifts? Does he try to charm you? Does he attempt a straightforward abduction while I'm away aboard the herd? No, apparently not. No. He traps you in your home 
but appoint an army of wolves to surround the area and lead you to descend into madness and malnutrition on a diet of turnips and isolation and haggis. Romantic obsession has no logic. I'm sorry, it must be something else. There's got to be something else they want, I just can't figure out what. Well, can you wake my lecture up? Let's get the forecast. She might know if there's been some sort of wolf dispersal. She's blanking me again. Malexa, wake up. Malexa? Get the crook. Uh, but I gave it to Chuck in case he needed to use it against the bad guys. You've done what? Well, he's got a sword and everything, but it isn't very big. Oh, you <laughs> did <laughs> She and I agreed I'd gain her confidence by returning her sheep. <laughs> and I suppose you spent the last two hours trying to pluck up the courage to ask my permission. Oh, please, Mummy. May I herd the sheep back to Bo Peep's farm with my ridiculous, flaccid crook? <laughs> <laughs> no, I spent the time spraying them with wolf repellent and letting them loose. She instructed you to release her sheep, and you've just gone ahead and done it. I'm the one who issues you instructions, not her. I was uh, following her instructions in order to speed up the process of following your instructions. And where are Shaggy and Scratch? Off following my instructions, just getting the flock moving in the right direction. I told them to report to me when they saw you return, the traitors. But my instructions, which arose from Bo Peep's instructions, have ultimately derived from your instructions. Hence, technically, they are following your instructions. Get it? <laughs> no! <laughs> I came to explain it before I left, so you wouldn't turn them into donkeys. Don't be here, however. It's you I'm going to turn into a donkey if you don't start making a bit more sense. Why hasn't Alexa been updating you this far? She's had a meltdown. What's up there talking about me? Alexa, wake up and give us a report. She won't respond. Hello, Chuck, you handsome young buck. <laughs> well, now she's following your instructions too. Well, Alexa, what can you tell me about Bo Peep? Uh, what's she been saying? What's on, what's on her mind? Rocky Harbour, and wooded hall. Mossy staircase, let me trawl. Ever over each ridge and rise, for he who claim my heart his prize. Then that settles it. By this crook, I will claim her heart my price. Hold on. That's her crook. You've got it. And it's responding to you. Well, don't you see? I don't need Bo Peep and a stupid sheep. If you have the crook, <coughs> give it to me. <laughs> trusted me to do it. By deeds and choices man is bad, not by the lifestyle he once had. Bo Peep lent me her crook and trusted me to do the right thing with it. And that's exactly what I intend to carry on doing. I've returned her sheep and now I'm returning her crook. And if she carries any love for me in her heart, I'll return that as well. Tenfold. Goodbye, mother. Change you back. You couldn't change me back. 
Anti-vax campaign reckons it's all a conspiracy. What a muppet. So it turns out you didn't have a secret admirer after all. Honestly, how cliche. <laughs> oh, speaking of going outside again, I should really let Hoplet out of her style for one day. I'll do it. Oh, he's a lovely lad, isn't he? The only thing is, Never really relax with a stranger in the house. <laughs> was that an earthquake? No, it's just my digestive system catching up with some relaxation. <laughs> oh, mother! Any more relaxation and we'll only gas masks. Well, go and finish the drying up if it's all that bad. I can't find the tea towel. Oh, my mistake. I'm sitting on it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Chuck? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, daughter-in-law. I've come for my crook. Sit back down in that chair, dummy. Kick that crook over here. Go on, do it. What have you done with Chuck? Quite the dashing hero he is these days. He came charging at me with his blade flashing. Until he got the scab of the lip tangled up in his legs and uh, fell over the wall of the pink pen. When his head hit the door of the pink pen, well, he got the sword all together. Truly the pink pen is mightier than the sword. Oh. Oh, silence, clown! An oven glove. Even if you could bear to hold the crook, you wouldn't be able to use it. I don't plan to use it. Merely to destroy it. Just a 
<laughs> well, what did you expect? A fairy tale, Mindy? It's not even a proper pantomime. <laughs> Mother! Avenge me! Oh, oh sleep. Put this one out of our misery. It's quite narrow, but it's nice. They've got a heritage railway. It's <laughs> quite narrow. <laughs> Thank you for joining in. Uh, and they've got a bypass. It's it's the perfect width <laughs> because you can get a line of traffic one way, line of traffic the other way, and then there's a kind of a murder no man's land <laughs> <laughs> for people who drive BMWs now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, what else? What else? Uh, I mean, basically, to sum up, it's like Dunstable. Oh. <laughs> That's what got you. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's like Dunstable, but, but with delusions of grandeur. It's it's like Dunstable, but it doesn't know it's a shit <laughs> It's like Dunstable <laughs> with 200 zebra crossings and a waitrose. Yeah. It's like Dunstable, basically. We're wasting time. <laughs> 